Well, supermarket giant Coles is the latest in a growing number of companies admitting to underpaying some staff. SBS finance editor Ricardo Gonzalez joins me now in the studio. Ricardo, this news, of course, takes some of the shine off the profit announcement today. Janice, the results being called respectable, but a lot of the attention was on a $20 million provision for staff underpayment, which Cole says impacts less than 1% of its total team members. Australia, Cole's fresh tickies have arrived. Also arriving, an admission that the company had been underpaying some of its staff for as long as six years following a review. We've said that this applies to less than 1%. Um, but we've also said that the result, uh, the review is uh, sort of ongoing. It stretches across its supermarkets and liquor divisions, thought to reach around 600 people, and it's put aside $20 million to make things right. Coles is the latest in a string of employers to shortchange their workers, including rival Woolworths, which underpaid some of its employees as much as $300 million. Another high-profile case was that of celebrity chef George Calambaris, whose business collapsed just last week. Lawyer Samantha Manguana says it's a growing problem. We're being called almost daily by workers concerned about underpayments and sometimes quite significant sums. While there's some merit to concerns of award complexity... The reality is that the system is much less complex now than it was a decade ago. A recent report by PwC estimates as much as 13% of the total Australian workforce may be at risk, with worker underpayments as high as $1.35 billion per year. Some are more exposed than others. Particularly where there are vulnerable vulnerable workers, migrants who perhaps aren't as well versed in what their entitlements are. The government says it's time for reform as it seeks to introduce legislation to criminalise the most serious forms of deliberate worker exploitation. Corporate Australia surely now has got the message that they need to get their house in order. For Coles, today's update detracted from a 0.4% lift in half-year earnings before interest and tax of $725 million. Despite the fires and, and bushfires, its full-year guidance was also maintained. So good news. Coal shares fell 1%. Now, experts are continuing to count the costs of the coronavirus. The Reserve Bank today warned it presented a material near-term risk to the economic outlook for China and international trade flows and thereby the Australian economy. It's even having an impact on one of the world's largest listed companies. Apple has issued a warning to the market that it won't meet its March quarter revenue guidance. The company makes most of its iPhones in China, but the outbreak has affected production and demand in the country, with many of its stores closed or operating reduced or operating hours reduced it might be harder to come by the devices with apple saying iphone supply will be temporarily constrained as manufacturing facilities slowly return to full capacity and global australian miner bhp has warned the coronavirus may force it to revise economic and commodity demand growth if the outbreak isn't contained by march in the meantime, though, BHP shareholders will be in for a windfall, with a miner paying its biggest half-year dividend in history at 65 US cents per share. And that follows a 39% increase in half-year underlying profit to $5.2 billion, driven by solid iron ore prices. And investors like the news, with shares rising 0.8%, but they were disappointed with Cochlear, and Seven hit a record low after it issued a profit downgrade. All up, our share market gave up 0.2%, and the Australian dollar is trading lower at 66.8%. US ahead of tomorrow's official wages data release from the Bureau of Statistics. And superannuation funds have hit the ground running in 2020. Researchers at Chant West say the median growth fund returned 1.9% in January on the back of a strong month for local shares, overseas bonds and a weaker Australian dollar. And they're also estimating so far in February funds are up 1.5%. It follows a stellar 2019 where funds rose nearly 15%. Further, over the last 10 years, the average return is 8.3% per annum. Those returns really aren't sustainable. Chant West said the biggest unknown impacting super funds so far this year is the potential spread of the coronavirus. Janice, that is the day in finance. Thank you so much, Ricardo.